To represent your country is fulfilment of a lifetime's ambition for any sportsman. While for many the Ashes remain the pinnacle, there are other rich narratives to be found. In my experience as a player, broadcaster and journalist, England against South Africa has been a contest that has served up no end of stories, drama, landmarks and headlines. A punch to the dressing room. What a test match, what a series. Pashi Mamla, the first South African to get 300 in a test match. Hold in. Magnificent drama, wonderful test match cricket. As in life, politics has never been far away from these two sides. South Africa were isolated for 21 years from the cricket landscape because of an abhorrent apartheid regime. There were rebel tours in between before Mandela's long walk to freedom. Out of the wilderness and into the 1992 World Cup, I remember watching from Cape Town as I recuperated from a back operation. Welcome to the SCG for this uh, second semi between England and South Africa. As controversy unfolded in an infamous early encounter after readmission. We've got a strange situation here, but everyone seems to be a bit confused at the moment. South Africa need 22 runs off this one ball. Somehow, I don't think that's possible. That's a disappointing end to a great semi-final. My first series against South Africa ended in a draw. They oval the stage for one of the most stunning bowling performances I've ever seen. Devon Malcolm bowling like the wind to take nine for 57. Bowled him, nine wickets for Malcolm. 18 months later, Mandela was keen to meet the destroyer, though Malcolm's relationship with coach Raymond Illingworth fell apart, and with it went the series. Jubilation for South Africa. They take the test match, they take the series. Back to the drawing board once again for Michael Atherton. But 1998 brought redemption. I don't see why that isn't old. And one of the highlights of my career. Test match cricket at its best. Oh, Donald is really upset. That innings helped us level the series before we held our nerve in a tense decider at Headingley. He's given him out. England have won. The following tour started disastrously. On the first morning of the series, we found ourselves two for four in no time. And England are looking like a village side on the village green at the moment. We would lose the series 2-1, our only victory coming in a match that we would discover to have been tainted by corruption. Once money has been accepted, one is compromised, then it becomes difficult to turn back. The Rainbow Nation has been the birthplace for many before the Three Lions came calling. A well-trodden path down the years, but one player has stood out like no other from my view in the press box. Hi folks, my name's Kevin Peterson, and you better believe it. A player at home in the spotlight, capable of performances beyond most of his peers. He can do things that other England players just can't. A brilliant 100 at Headingley in 2012, played against the backdrop of unrest in the England camp. Where will you be with your cricket in a year's time? I don't know, mate. I don't know. Where would you like to be? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. England against South Africa has become a series that has defined captaincy spells. For me, perhaps young and naive and a moment to forget. The dirt in my pocket was used to dry my fingers because it was a hot and humid day. Though a match-saving 185 in Johannesburg remains one of my proudest innings for my country. The greater the adversity, the greater the performance from the England captain. In 2003, I watched a young, brash 22-year-old South African stamp his mark on these shores with consecutive double centuries. Well, we can't get any happier than that. What an unbelievable feat. Smith's arrival ended the era of Hussein. I'm afraid that, um, you know, it's just time for a change. And five years later, Michael Vaughan's decorated spell ended in tears. And I spoke to my dad this morning, he said, you know, you can walk away a proud lad. In 2012, as Smith guided his side to a series win and number one in the world, Andrew Strauss would exit stage left, resigning and retiring shortly afterwards. The last time South Africa were on English shores was in 2017 when we saw a 26-year-old Yorkshireman appointed the 80th men's test captain. He had an opening game to remember, scoring 190 at Lord. England's captain is what dreams are made of, the wonderful innings. 
Yeah, it was pretty special. Bit of a dream world, to be honest. England would win the series 3-1 amid hundreds. And that has gone many a mile into the sky. And hat tricks. What a way to up. end a test match. And finally, in the winter of 2019, in a pre-COVID world, England's Superman and man of the series dragged them to another win over a South African team in transition. For the first time since 1956-57, England win in Cape Town. That man has now become the 81st captain of his country. A brave new era in English cricket has dawned. And like everyone else, I'll be watching on as we await the latest chapter of a story rich in history.